Since you guys all love the Venus video so much, I decided to get it on and start a Mars series for you because Mars is also a really exciting planet. Especially because Mars and Venus are kind of a couple, you know, Mars is about sexuality and our drive and our energy and Venus is about our romance and our more soft, feminine, um, emotional side. So now we're going to look into the more rough masculine side of our <laughs> love life and check out what your Mars says about you. And in my videos, I'm going to be looking at four aspects of Mars. The first aspect is the actual physical energy. Because that's also what Mars means. So Mars tells us how much energy we have, like how much energy does our body produce, because not everybody wakes up with the same amount of energy at the beginning of the day. We wish it was like that, but we actually know it's not. So that's the first aspect, physical energy in sports. Second energy of Mars is the how we do things, the doing, the action. So when we have a goal, how do we go on about getting there? This is also something that Mars tells us, like how do you do things you do? What is your way of doing? The third aspect of Mars is conflict. How do you handle conflict? How do you fight? Do you fight at all? Um, and the last aspect is sexuality, of course. What do you like? What do you not like? What attracts you? What doesn't attract you? Because what's very important to distinguish, and all astrologers learn that and know that, is that Mars and Venus are not the same thing. So love and sex are not the same thing for most humans, unless you maybe have a conjunction of Venus and Mars, so that's kind of the same for you. But normally people who have sexuality and romance in different signs, i.e. Mars and Venus in different signs, they just feel emotionally attracted to one kind of people and sexually attracted to another kind of people and that usually creates some conflict inside of their head but I'm here to tell you that that's pretty normal and you just need to get to know yourself and learn how to deal with it so let's get started Mars and Gemini Gemini air sign and mutable so here we are, we arrived at the most unstable Mars you will ever meet. <laughs> Generally, the air signs have, yeah, are the most unstable or disconnected Mars signs. They are very disconnected from the body because air is um, mental energy, whereas fire, earth and water are still somehow, you know, in the body. They're more physical. Air is a very mental energy and Mars is about physicality. It belongs to Aries naturally so it doesn't feel very comfortable in air signs especially in a mutable one like Gemini so here Mars is just like all over the place he doesn't know what to do he doesn't know what to do <laughs> okay let's start so when it comes to physical energy yeah it's very dispersed there is a lot of energy like Mars and uh, Gemini people feel like they have a lot of energy but all the energy is in the head it's all in the head space, in the, in the air space. It's very hard for them to actually manifest something. So Mars and Gemini people might be like thinking, hey, I have so many ideas, like great ideas. But to actually get something done, get it done well, thoroughly and actually finish it is so hard. And I have a lot of clients with Mars and Gemini who come and they really struggle with this. They're like, what should I do? I just can't focus. I'm like, yeah, I know. But it is more about learning how to deal with this than to change it. Okay, so Gemini, uh, Mars and Gemini people, they are multitaskers, right? So they have a lot of energy, but they cannot focus it on one thing. Um, when it comes to the body, that means that, yeah, they need um sports or entertainment they do need that but it needs to be something that is like changing and that like really requires their mental attention as well like um juggling for example <laughs> like you know where they have to juggle these ball balls and there's a lot to think there's a lot to see it has to be like very mentally stimulating for them um or i don't know they will obviously also be good in all of this kind of sports but they're actually more like mind games like chess or or um, how do you call it, pool um, and stuff like this, but I don't count this with sports. I'm more thinking about what can they do with their body. So when it comes to their body, they need to have this kind of mix of mental and physical stimulation at the same time. 
So yeah, I think juggling is one thing that uh, I can think of. And then maybe, I don't know, games might be interesting for them, you know, like all kinds of games where you move and think at the same time, things like that. Um, but yeah, they are a little bit disconnected from the body. Um, so just because all their, the, their energy is in their head. When it comes how to, to how they do things, like how they pursue their goals, it's the same. It's like they have a big issue with like starting and finishing something in one go. This is not the way of Mars and Gemini. It's like, I'm here and I'm here and then I'm here and then I'm here. So they might, oh, if you talk to a Mars and Gemini person, you will find that they always have like a zillion projects running at the same time. Because they start a lot of things and they just run them parallelly at the same time because they can't just work on one thing so they um, need to do it like that right they need to start something then leave it do something else and then come back to it and work on it again then come do something else come back to it again so they do it bit by bit like piece by piece they can't finish everything in one piece no matter what it is that they start they need all this simultaneous different inputs and because they just get distracted so quickly um so if you really force them into this system where they have to do a nine to five where they have to focus on one task they will not do it very thoroughly so they will you know try to find shortcuts or be street smart and find a way around to do things like really quickly and not very well because they just want to get it over with if you would give them the option to, you know, work on different things simultaneously and like a long timeline so they can, you know, deliver uh, and deliver those things like in a long timeline so they have time in the meantime to keep switching between projects that will work well for them. Then they will do it well. But if you like give them like one task and tell them you have to work on this until you're done, it's probably going to be bad. They're going to try to find a way around. They're going to be impatient. They're going to do it. Yeah just in a sketchy way, okay? So if you want to work with them, you need to think um, in a different way than generally employers do. Um, okay, when it comes to conflict, okay, they don't necessarily shy conflict. They are, they're okay with it, but they're gonna like take it to the mental level, obviously, you know, they're very smart very smart, very witty, very funny, very humorous. So fighting with them might really like infuriate you because they might take a stance of kind of not taking you seriously, like making fun of you while you're telling them, like expressing your anger or your feelings. They might be like sarcastic or ironic or, or do something similar like that, which really infuriates other people, but they, they just don't care. They don't get very emotional because this Mars in an air sign is not like very physical, is not very emotional. So they can keep on discussing forever because they will never like, they will never be out of any mental input. They will never be out of words of what to say, of how to reply. They will always have a reply. Um, so they can keep on discussing forever if they really want to. But since Mars and Gemini, like I said, gets distracted very easily, they might just get bored with the argument after a while. They might just be like, okay, I'm off to do something else. Like, they don't give a shit. That's how you, how other people might perceive it. It's like, they don't even take me seriously here. <laughs> you know? um, yeah, so they might just turn around and be like, okay, I'm done. Peace out. I'm going to do something else. Or they, because Gemini is also the sign of listening. So they actually take things in. Like when you express something to a Gemini, it goes into their head. They hear it. So um, they listen. And they also have an ability to see perspectives because Gemini is one of the only signs, maybe Aquarius also a little bit, that really can hold various different and even conflicting perspectives at the same time. So they can be like, okay, I see how A is right and then how B is right, both at the same time, although they're like opponents. So what also might happen in five with Gemini is that they just back off, that they're just like, okay, okay, well, I listen to you, I hear what you're saying, and yeah, you're right, I can see your point, cool, that's it. People are like, oh, wow, that was easy. Yeah, Geminis are not very opinionated. Like for them, it doesn't matter to, to win an argument because they are not holding on to any opinion. They are the opposing sign of Sagittarius. Sagittarius is the one who preaches and who holds like grand opinions. Gemini not. Gemini just has the ability to see 
each side of the coin. So in an argument, they might just as well also like let you win, but honestly let you win. Just be like, oh, okay, okay, I got it. I know, I know what you're all about. So let's just leave it at that. And yeah, so that's Gemini in conflict. When it comes to sexuality, okay, <laughs> from everything I've said so far, probably the first conclusion you must draw is that Gemini is unfaithful because they jump from partner to partner to partner. Well, that's exactly the wrong conclusion, okay? Because Gemini, like I said in the beginning, is disconnected from the body. Sex is not even important to them. That's the whole thing. You know, it's more like the fire Mars signs that will look for different partners and look, you know, to have sex with a lot of different people. But air Mars signs don't do that. It's just more, the question is more like, how to get them interested in sex at all. You know, Gemini might not, will not like turn away and look for a different partner. They will turn away and start reading a book, you know. They will turn away and, and start, I don't know, like painting. They will start doing something else, you know. Um, so when it comes to sexuality, it's really important like for them to be mentally stimulated by that person, to have a mental connection, to have a great conversation. If they perceive you as intelligent, like, ooh, that is sexy, that's sexy right there, you know? If you mentally dominate them, like, if they even perceive that you're more intelligent than them, then that's it, you know? Then they might jump on you. That's kind of the way Gemini Mars works. Um, they also vary into everything to do with words. Like, if you want to seduce them, just start talking to them. Just start telling them you know, all the things you want to do to them or just start to talk about sex, what, what you like, what you don't like. Start to bring it out through words. That's how it works for them. That's how you will get them turned on. Um, obviously, they also like, you know, talking about fantasies, expressing fantasies because there's so much in their mental space and they're so creative. Dirty talk, anything. Um, once you get them interested in you sexually, they can be very creative sexual partners, you know. Um, they love experimenting with almost anything that exists. They're very open-minded. They won't say no to anything or judge anything. So you found like your most creative, most versatile sexual partner right there. It's, yeah, just sometimes hard to keep them interested in the physical part itself. And even throughout sex, sometimes you might feel like they're not very present, you know, like they're thinking about something else. Um, and that might get people upset. Sometimes they might just lose, lose their interest even throughout the sexual act, just like, or, you know, I'm dry, sorry. Um, that's kind of Gemini. So to keep their attention bad, you need to be very creative too. Um, like there needs to be more than just the physical because the physical doesn't really get them into it like the Mars and air signs so there needs to be some more creativity maybe some I don't know you know like fantasy exploration some toys some I don't know, role playing something you know that keeps them like you know curious about what's going to happen so that is Mars in Gemini. <laughs>